My, my theory for formulating sound for a band really comes down to starting at their level and enhancing what they do by adding extra stuff in and achieve what they're hearing in their head. At the same time, maybe achieve things that they've never thought they could achieve before. And sometimes it's as simple as adding a guitar pedal in the equation or adding a new guitar to the equation. Pedals themselves, whether they be MXR or, who, or whomever, to me became a, a big part of the way I make records because to me it's the simplest form of outboard gear. So, you know, I, I tell people, look, if you, if you want to mix or whatever, you don't really need tons of outboard gear to mix, get yourself a pair of guitar pedals. So, I, I mean, I often, when I'm doing vocals on records, I'll have a proper vocal mic but I always have some kind of handheld with a quarter inch jack coming out of it that's going into some kind of pedals because I like the fact that I can distort a vocal easily by plugging into a Distortion Plus or a Tube Screamer as opposed to having to put some kind of plug in on it. And there it is, committing to that sound. The, you know, the three first MXR pedals I got was a Distortion Plus, a Phase 90, and, a, and the, the 10 band EQ. So, I mean, I still have all of my original MXRs and almost original boxes because even the box was cool looking. MXR pedals in general, um, just I, I love the fact that they were simple to use, they were sturdy, they just look cool as shit and just to, get, to dial in a sound easy like the MXR Phase 90, one knob, there's, there's two great sounds instantly right there, less extreme, more extreme. Same thing with the Distortion Plus, boost your amp, overdrive, blow your amp up. It's awesome sounding because not only did it sound great on guitar, it sounded great on bass. So as it boosted and gave you distortion, it also got rid of some of the muddiness and it really made your sound cut. Um, and also the 10 band EQ was great. And that was my friend Mike Little taught me about preamping the front end of my Marshall without a distortion box, being able to turn the, the amp up and get its sound and getting overdrive out of the head and boosting it just a little more on the front end. And then later on, I got into the phase 100, and then I went backwards in time and got into the phase 45, and then I discovered the micro amp for, for boosting front end. Um, and a big part of the first Queens record was we were, you know, we, you know Josh Homme's a different, unique guitar player, both technically and sonically. Instead of using high gain amplifiers, he would use amps that didn't have so much gain and we'd boost the front end up. And MXR, uh, the, the micro amp was one of the biggest pedals that we used to use back then because we can get a little more sustain and squishiness in front of the amp and make it work a little harder just by boosting that signal into it. So then, you know, then you get into the modulation effects, the original micro chorus and flangers. And I, I love putting the MXR micro flanger and the micro, uh, Micro chorus and the micro flange are together. That's one of my favorite combos. So it's you know people think oh, I'm gonna flange something or I'm gonna chorus something. Well, why not chain a few together? And how you rearrange them too. Sometimes the flanger sounds better in front of the chorus. Sometimes the chorus sounds better in front of the flanger. So having the the facility to be able to pull at will on any kind of instrument or or to be creative at any moment. And that's how I stay fresh too. I, I mean if if I'm not working, I might be in here plugging three or four pedals in in a row and experimenting with sounds and creating unique sounds that I knew in my mind I might try to use on the next record I work on. <laughs>